Well, you got a brand new Lowrance HDS fish finder, top of the line from Lowrance. But is it doing what it should? Is it set up the best way it possibly could be for your fishing? Well, stay tuned and we'll show you how to get it done. Hi, I'm Glenn from Aqua Lifestyle and this is one of our series of HDS Live videos. We've already done a video on basic setup, uh, which you can see in the link down below. We've also done one on the basic traditional sonar setup, which you can also find a link to that down below. And we will be uh, publishing shortly here one on the chart plotter setup, so stay tuned for that. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so when the new videos are out, you'll know. Okay, let's check it out. As I mentioned before, this is just one in a series on the HDS Live sounder units. This video is shot on the Lowrance HDS Live 9-inch unit, courtesy of Lowrance. We're not sponsored by them, but they loaned us a unit to be able to do this video. All right, so let's get started. We're back at the home screen. We've already done the sonar, so now we're going to hit the side scan icon to get into the side scan functions, and there it is. Uh, down at the bottom, you've got your zoom. You can tap on it to zoom in and zoom out, basically widen and narrow the field of view on the screen. And that's what those little icons down at the bottom do. And you can also put your finger on there, move the um, image around, and create a waypoint or a mark just by putting the crosshairs where you want and hitting saving waypoint. And then you can add an icon whichever one you want. So that's one way to do it. Find some structure, you can mark it easily. Now, we have another video uh, that explains what you're looking at here in the side view and how to interpret the picture. So we'll post a, a link to that video down below, but uh, definitely check that one out to see what it is you're looking at on the side view so you can understand how to read it. Now, your menus on the side here, you can adjust the distance, the range from the center line out uh, to the number of feet, you could set it to auto and it'll auto find. It's nice to have it zoomed out when you're looking for structure and then zoom in once you want to get more detail on the structure and get a better view of it. You also have two frequency options, 455 and 800 kilohertz. The 455, great for while you're searching for structure, 800 better for getting higher detail once you found it. Next on the menu you have your contrast slider, and it is a slider, just slide it up and down, change your contrast, but you're probably better off leaving it in auto for most of the time. Next is your palette, and again you can change your coloration to whichever you prefer. Different uh, fishermen like different colors for different types of fishing, so it's really personal preference. Just go through them and pick the one you like best and gives you the best definition. So we'll hit back, and now we'll click advance. That takes us to surface clarity. You've got low, medium, and high. Just remember, if you take it off low, you are reducing the sensitivity of that transducer in the sonar. Next, you can flip it left or right by pressing the button, turning that on and off. That'll flip the image left and right, invert it. Hitting the back button and more options down at the bottom of the menu line there will give you some more options here. First one is stop. That'll stop your sonar. It doesn't shut it down. It just stops it temporarily, so you can start it again quickly. Uh, you can view left and right, next option, so you can see left screen only full screen or right screen only full screen, and if you're looking for a specific rock pile, that kind of thing. Um, if we hit back, the last option is range lines. That'll draw in range lines on the screen. Even though you got a scale at the bottom, it will put those range lines in if you need them. So that's it for side scan. If we go back to our home screen, our next advanced sonar option is down scan. Navico's down scan with fish reveal is phenomenal. So the first option on the menu is range. We've got it set to auto and uh, you can change the depth ranges. You can change frequency again between your 455 and your 800. 800 is going to be more sensitive but it's not going to work as well at deeper depths. Uh, you have an auto contrast just like you do with other sonar features with your slider that we've discussed. If we go back, you've got your palette options, just like you do with your other sonar options. You've got the advanced, so we click that, and surface clarity, again, low, medium, and high. 
The higher you set that, the lower the sensitivity will be. Fish reveal options. You can adjust sensitivity, color line, and surface clarity, all with sliders. Color line again with sliders and surface clarity for the fish reveal itself all on their own in the palette. So those arcs within the image there showing the fish, these menu functions will control just those arcs in the image. Now if we hit back and stop sonar, again it'll stop it just like all the other sonar features. And if we tap fish reveal, it'll actually turn it off. You'll see it scroll through on the screen here and the fish reveal will disappear since that little icon is not there on the corner of that bar. See, there they are, they've gone. And if we tap it again, you'll see the little orange corner there that turns it back on. And you'll see they'll start appearing again on the screen. There they are coming off the right side of the screen. You can add range lines by hitting the range lines button. And then below that you've got preview. You can do that cursor only or always. If we pick a spot on the screen, put a cursor, you can see the area in blue starts after that cursor point. Hit the off button and that history will go away. So one thing you can notice here is a lot of the menu features and functions are the same no matter what sonar you're working with. So once you learn one, the basics are pretty much the same for all of them. Now next we're going to go to the home screen and click on the 3D sonar button. Now this is only available if you have the optional 3D module in Transducer. Now this feature will give you an amazing 3D perspective of what's in your beam and you can see your beam real time and the history following behind it. Um, in a 3D version. Again, the menu functions are going to be very similar for this as they are for other features with your palettes, your range. Uh, you can pick palette colors as you can see we're doing here, different palettes, again to customize it. But again, very, very similar to all the other sonar features and functions. Um, you've got your advanced setting, again with surface clarity, flipping, vertical uh, enhancement. Again, when you change the enhancement rate, um, you're changing the sensitivity. So keep in mind when you make those adjustments. Um, again, very, very similar to the other sonar functions, but you get to see here what your 3D imagery looks like with that 3D transducer and module. Just like on other sonars, if I hit the back, it'll take me back to the previous menu and down at the bottom I've got the more options. Again we've got the stop sonar, clear live history, view lock, depth highlighting, which if I hit that you'll see highlight certain depth settings. Now if you look at the center on the right side you'll see these two icons. If you press that one and then use your finger you can actually drag the angle of view around by pressing that button there and then putting it on in dragging it through. The icon on the bottom will give you your history bar at the top pressing that one. So, And you can move it around and you can drag it to change the angle that you want. So lots of flexibility there. So back to our home screen and now we're going to press Live Sight. And again this is only available with the optional equipment. Now the menu is going to be familiar with your auto down and forward. You can select whether you're looking down or forward depending on the angle you set your transducer. You got a little icon on the corner of the screen that will show you whether it's in down or forward mode. And you can set the auto. And down range, again you can adjust range, sensitivity, noise rejection, all the menu features and functions are going to be very similar as you have with other sonar modes. And as you run through them, you're going to see they're all very familiar. The only one that you might not see is the target trails, and that will draw trails behind your target. As the name indicates, you can turn that on and off. Again, you can flip views and do all the other features. Now, it's going to be very much the same with the active target. It doesn't work on the simulator mode here on the bench, so we won't go through that. But the menu functions are going to be the same as the live view. Very similar. If you understand one, you'll be able to operate them all. Now, our next video is going to be on the chart plotter, setting it up, operating it, creating waypoints and routes on that, and getting to use some of the advanced features that this machine offers in chart plotter mode. So stay tuned for that video. That will be coming up here shortly. Post any questions you have down in the comment section below. And we'll do our best to get to them. Remember to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And we'll see you back here soon. Thanks so much for watching.